Welcome to Nightmare Nation, the paranormal themed podcast where we talk about haunted places around the world and scary things and demons and ghosts and witches and seances and cults, UFOs and aliens and all things scary, paranormal, weird, unexplained that you don't know how to explain. Yeah. Because that's what unexplained means. That is the definition mm. of the word. You're and welcome. if you didn't know it, now you do. So you're welcome. We're you practically Webster's Dictionary. Illiterate over here. goons. Bitches. So basically, if it makes you like think about things late at night when you can't sleep and you're just wondering like what what is all about those ghosts and possessions and creepy things that no one really knows how to account for in any meaningful way, we're here to talk about it. Yeah, we are. As much as we like to talk about haunted places, we're not only confined to haunted locations. We also no. love a good possession story, a good cult theory, anything to do with aliens and UFOs. Really just anything scary that spooks you. We did some fun stuff on the Bermuda Triangle and Bigfoot a while back. It's good times. It's such good times. That's what we're here to do is to tell you about all of these unexplained things and to hope that we can maybe change your mind about these unexplained phenomena or, you know... Unless you already believe in it, in which case don't change your mind, please. Exactly. Stick with it and you you keep going with your theories because that's what we're here for. (laughs) Yes. Also, I'm Annie. Hey, I'm Anna. Hey, what's up? That's That's who we are. We're best friends, and we want to be your best friends. Yeah. So thanks for being here, friends. (laughs) (laughs) So... It's like we haven't podcast in like two oh weeks. Oh my god, but it's, it's been like literally a week, and I'm like, how do I do this thing called podcasting? <laughs> what do I do? We've only been doing it for how a year do and I a hop half. Into this um, I don't know what life is, so it's fine. <laughs> Here we are. Life. We're um, drinking a drink. Okay, it's gonna be a craft cocktail cult in like two ish weeks. So quick context. Not tonight's craft cocktail cult. Oh, oh, oh! It's like a future one. Yeah. Oh, because you're Cause, doing the the yeah. yeah okay, got it. Uh huh. So. We went strawberry picking last week, mm-hmm. and I unfortunately had a random bout of illness that I couldn't really explain that prevented me from going, but Anna picked, like, a whole freaking basket of strawberries. I picked eight pounds of strawberries. And my husband picked, like, similarly eight pounds yes. of strawberries. <laughs> so many so strawberries. Like, um, what sort of craft cocktail cult drink could we make that uses strawberries? Because what the hell else are we going to do with <laughs> fucking eight pounds of strawberries? Yep. Between two adults. That's yep. just an absurd amount. I mean, we managed within a week to get it all down. So I, spent I ate a sol- some, <laughs> Maddie ate a bunch, Ben ate some. Yeah, I spent like a solid 40 minutes cutting up, so like taking the stems off of and slicing up strawberries to freeze them for future use uh-huh. because I knew that like they'd be great in smoothies, they'd be good for like future baking things. So I spent like a solid 40 minutes cutting up like half the strawberries that we good had Lord. gotten and it took so long and I was like, oh my God, I'm so sick of cutting strawberries. <laughs> and then the rest we like ate with yogurt for breakfast and then made into like a Pies and beverages. Yep. We tried really hard to make this white chocolate strawberry beverage, and it just didn't turn out. And I was so <laughs> sad because in my head it sounded delicious, and I totally made it up on the spot. It was like, let's muddle some strawberries, and we'll throw in some like vanilla vodka, and then we have this like white chocolate liqueur that we had from a previous beverage we had made. That what else are we gonna use white chocolate liqueur for? Like white chocolate mm-hmm. and strawberries is a right. great combination. So we like modeled it and shook that all up and put it in a shaker and it just tasted fucking horrible (laughs) (laughs) so bummed i feel like you could have done like a little chocolate syrup or like some simple syrup we did add a little bit of sugar we didn't have simple syrup so we just added a spoonful of like sugar yeah and it was like okay but we tried to double strain it and like somehow some strawberry chunks ended up in the drink And somehow it didn't even taste like strawberry, despite the fact that I muddled like 500 strawberries into the thing. I don't know. Oh, no. (laughs) I would try it again with slightly different ratios. There you go. I will report back if it's successful. Okay, perfect. Yes. The beverage we're drinking tonight required two pounds of strawberries. Holy Jesus. Yep. So that took up almost like the last part of our strawberries. Oh, my God. And then I just froze the rest tonight that were still okay. And wow, now that's a lot. Finally, freaking gone. Oh well, so. you know, I love fresh strawberries. It's so fun. They're so good. So also, I- um, 
I was going to tell you, I watched, we watched a couple of horror movies this week. Oh, yeah? And it's been a while since we've watched, like, a legit horror movie. I feel like the last one I really saw was when we went to the theater and saw The Conjuring, which we covered last week in our Mm -hmm. episode. But we watched one called The Power. Oh. And it was about a nun who, sorry, not a nun. She looked like a nun. She was wearing this, like, white cap sort of thing over her hair. But she was a nurse in, like, England in the 70s. Or, like, 60s or something, and apparently at the time there was this big, like, power shortage where they would have these rolling blackouts at night where, because they were running short on power and they wanted to save on, like, the utilities, all of these facilities would have these, like, blackout periods where at night the power couldn't be on. Mm -hmm. And she happened to be a nurse working at a hospital, and on her first day on the job at this new hospital, she got assigned to the dark shift... Which is essentially the shift where they shut off power to the entire hospital and then they have a couple of backup generators that support the, like, intensive care and, like, neonatal units. So, like, all these people who really desperately need the power on and then everyone else gets moved to another facility. And I was, like, so in love with the concept. And I'm, like, there's this, like, nurse and it's her first night and the entire building is completely black. Like, horrifying scary she has all she has is like a little lantern and she's walking through the dark hallways and there's only a couple of like spaces in the building where there's light and this like creepy stuff starts happening and then spoiler alert it ends up being this ridiculous possession story where this like little girl victim who was like raped by a doctor at the hospital ends up possessing the nurse so that she can go and kill all the people who wronged her and then the girl after she gets possessed and realizes that the girl's spirit who possessed her is like on her side and she was just trying to get revenge for her abuse then they like join forces together and the movie ends with them like running down the hallway holding hands and they go and basically decide to form their own little like rapist murder squad where they're going to, like, hunt down and kill all these other oh people. I'm like, my. what in the hell? You had what? such an interesting premise. <laughs> and you could have done so much more with it. And you it. could have, like, made it so interesting. Just the just the idea of being trapped in a building where there literally is no light because mm-hmm. the company has shut off power to your building could have been interesting enough. And, like, the first 20, 30 minutes were fantastic. And then it was, like... You're going to turn this into some preachy possession movie? Like, what the hell? It was so unnecessarily just, like, terrible. Oh, I was so angry. I was like, you guys took a perfectly good premise and wasted it. I was so mad. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, Have you seen anything? No. Maddie wanted to watch Annabelle. Mm. But we had to rent Annabelle. Which one? The first one? The first one. But we had to rent it, and I didn't want to rent a movie because it was like three ninety nine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we had already rented it before. We actually had a Conjuring Universe movie marathon yesterday. That's awesome. Yeah, we didn't get to Annabelle, but we started. We had Annabelle comes home, Annabelle creation, Conjuring one and two, and I forget one of the other ones. Mm-hmm. And we started watching them yesterday. It was a good time. Nice. Yeah, she wanted to watch it. Chip. Is it chapter? Yeah, it chapter two. We also watched the it movies. <laughs> oh my god, Maddie like was on my wavelength. Yeah, she was. Yeah, but we had to rent that again because it was in Amazon Prime. Mm. Like, okay, so then we didn't watch those, but we watched Disney movies. Oh good. We watched the Aristocats and 101 Dalmatians. Oh my god, I love the Aristocats. It's one of my so favorite much. movies. Oh, it's just the best. Oh. Kitties. Mm-hmm. They're so cute. They're just so cute. Oh my gosh. And we watched Luca. <gasps> How was that? It was That's really a brand good. new one, right? It was, yeah. It was really cute. I was just looking at that the other day. I wanted to see it. And it's like a brand new Pixar movie, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, watch that was one. It, good? it was so good. And we watched um oh gosh. Oh Soul. <gasps> That one, I love that one so much. I've also been wanting to see that. It was that. so cute. Yep. I've heard good things. Watch it. I love it. Because it was great. Love the concept. Yes. Don't know anything about it, but I want to see it, it really so badly. Cute. It was oh, so cute. It was so cute. I liked it. Yeah. And, oh gosh, what else did we watch? She was just on a... We watched The Lion King. The Lion King one and a half. Oh. And The Lion King 2. God, that's a throwback. So we to watched like all of those. Childhood days. <laughs> Pretty oh much. Oh my God. It was like a full throwback movie marathon all week this week. How fun for you. We watched The Greatest Showman about three times. I mean, it's the best movie ever. I came back in one time from taking out the trash and I look at Ben and I look at the TV and we both give each other the stare because she put on The Greatest Showman <laughs> for like the third time this week. <laughs> I'm like, okay, kid. 
I need to start, like, introducing you to some new musicals that we can watch. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could so. watch The Greatest Showman start to end probably seven times a row, like, in a row every single day for probably a month without getting sick of it. I don't get sick I of it. I love that movie. Yeah. It's really good. Okay. So, friends, let's get to the actual content of today's episode. Heck, yeah. Which is... We're going to Massachusetts. Are we? Yeah, we are. In We're the, going the back Salem-ish to the Salem area. Salem area. Yeah, love it. Oh my god, everything about the witch trials I just find so fascinating. Mm-hmm. It's just the best. It really is. So we are going to the House of Seven Gables in Salem, Massachusetts. Which is sort of fun because it's like simultaneously a real place and like a literary place that is featured in a book, right? Tis is. Oh, tis is. I will talk about said book. Okay, let's hear about it. A little bit later on in my notes. All right. I'm ready for it. So my sources are seven, as in the number seven, gables.org. Wikipedia. (laughs) Wikipedia. <laughs> and hauntedhouses.com. Sweet. So thank you, sources. Thanks, friends. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for being friends of the podcast. <laughs> so the House of Seven Gables was built in 1668. Holy shit. I'm, I'm sorry. Old. 16? 1668. That is pre that is many the United ago. States, you guys. That's <laughs> long before our nation became a nation. Uh-huh. That's crazy pants. I know. In uh, the Salem, Massachusetts, by a Salem sea captain and merchant named John Turner. And three generations of the Turner family lived in the mansion before it was sold to Captain Samuel Ingersoll in 1782. So I have to interject real quick because when I was looking at the notes for this place, I started to panic really hardcore because we had covered another house in Salem, Massachusetts that was haunted. And I saw the name like something, the Turner house. And I was like, oh shit, did we do this place? Have we done this yet? I was like, did we not realize it had the same, like the House of Seven Gables name attached to it? And I was like, I swear to God, we covered a specific house. And it talked a little bit about like the witch trials and everything. I was like, fuck, we've done this one already. And then I realized we did the Joshua Ward house. Yeah, yep. Different dude, Yep. different house, same city, similar context. But I panicked really hardcore for a minute. I was like, oh my God, are we doing the wrong place? Like, I know. I feel horrible. like we need to let, go back and make a list of everything, like yes. every episode. So I, we I know. literally went back through all of my folders of like old episodes on my computer and was like, what the hell episode am I thinking of? Because I was like, okay, it's not the Turner house, but I know we've done another house in Salem. What the hell yep. is it? Oh my God. It was like over a year ago at this point. <laughs> I it's can't like we're going to get to anything. a point where we're just going to forget everything and already cover a house that we've done. I know. I can't even remember things Shit. I said 10 seconds ago, let alone episodes we've covered like yep. eight months ago. Exactly. Come on. Give me a break. So. So the, so the, the Turner. The Turner house. And the Ingersoll. Seven, oh, Ingersoll. Ingersoll. Yes. In 1782. The house was originally a two-room, two-and-a-half-story house with a projecting front porch and a massive central chimney. Chimney? Chimney. Not chimney. 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 Like Jiminy Cricket. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Haven't we had this conversation we before have. about chimney? Because <laughs> I say it weird. <laughs> you weirdo. Chim, chim, chimney? Yeah. Chimney. There you go. I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> no, I don't like chimney. I'm just so. going to keep saying chimney. Okay, fine. Yep. All right. Because it's like chim, chimney. Right. Like chimney. Chimney. There you go. It sounded was, like how I always say No, it. that was closer to how I say it. Uh, you know debatable. what? You do you. I will do me. All right. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> All right. A few years later, a kitchen lean to. I don't know what that is. Um, I, like a I small feel like I've heard that before. For? I have two, but I don't know like specifically. Like what I can't it picture is. it in my head. I don't. So if you know what a kitchen lean to is, let us know. But it had a kitchen lean to. Oh. And they also had a new North Kitchen, k- Kitchenelle. A Kitchenelle. Kitchen L. Not a kitchenette. A Kitchenelle. So like a different version of a small. Not quite full kitchen. Maybe, maybe unless oh. I type this out improper, oh, which is be. a possibility. So it might be a kitchenette. Could be a kitchenette. But a typo. Or a kitchen L. Or, you know. E L L. All right. Architectures. 
carpenters let us know what construction the hell peeps <laughs> let us is. know what's going on because i don't know what i wrote and if you I have also... a kitchen l send us a picture <laughs> <laughs> wrote these on like thursday so cool. <laughs> here we are it's sunday by the way yes it is sunday so, so that's where we are So by 1676, there was a spacious south front extension with its own chimney. (laughs) First of all, thank you for saying chimney correctly. I appreciate that. Also, when you said spacious, I swear to God, I was expecting you to say spaceship. (laughs) And you're like, this house has its own spaceship. And I was like, what the fuck? No! This house was built in the 1600s. What do you mean? They had their own spaceship. Duh. Oh my god, I got Come so on. excited for a second. I'm and so sorry. You said I spacious, you and it was a it was like a significant bummer. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Not a spaceship, but a spacious uh, south front damn extension. I'm just all I can think about is spaceships now. I'm so sorry. I'm so bummed. So sorry. <laughs> Um, so the spacious south front extension with its own chimney contained a parlor on the ground floor with a large bed chamber above it. I like how they called, like, bedrooms chambers. Bed chamber? Yeah. Like, that sounds just so, like, ominous. Would you like to come see our bed chamber? <laughs> Do you have, like, a jail in there with some shackles hanging? There's, like, a freaking, like, suit of armor in the corner and, like, a sconce <laughs> with, like, a torch on the wall. Yeah. Yes. That's perfect. Our bed chamber. Chamber. Yes. Mm. It's quite medieval. Yes, it is. So in the 18th century, John Turner II, who was, I'm assuming, John Turner's son. That would make sense. Yes. Remodeled the house to the new Gregorian style, adding wood paneling and sash windows. Oh. Again, not an architect, so I don't know what any of this means. And you know, I'm not going to explain it because it's boring as shit to me. We've so. never promised expertise. No, not at if all. If you ever got the impression that we knew anything about what we were talking about, I'm sorry. I don't know where so you sorry. got that impression from. We're just regurgitating information that we've we copy just, pasted from somewhere else. So We just pretend to know, and you guys can just take it for what it is. I mean, if there's something that we cover that we don't explain, it's because we either A, don't know, or B, don't care. So go exactly. Google it for yourself. Because and- we don't want to bore you with all this nonsense. We want to get to the good haunting scary things and not yeah. none of this like well this person bought this and then they change it to an architectural of this which is this and that and nah, eh. Eh. some things are better left just cut out leave it to the experts who know shit about architecture exactly. instead of us trying to like extrapolate and guess and you know make comments about things of which we know nothing so yeah. let's not do that we're not gonna we never will. Nope. I, I promise you, we will never <laughs> make an educated comment about architecture. No. That's a guarantee. Exactly. That's a Nightmare Nation promise <laughs> right there. So during the remodel, this was done during the Salem Witch Trials. So John Turner, f- too, feared for the safety of his sisters. So he built a secret staircase along the fireplace up to the second floor in case a cruel, sadistic... N- Magnistrate. What? I'm sorry. What? Mag Mag Magistrate. 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 Yeah. Magistrate. Magistrate. What's a magistrate? I mean, like a bad person. It's like a like a um policeman. Yeah, like someone who uh executes the law. Okay. Civil officer Uh. or judge who administers the law. Thanks, okay. thanks, Wikipedia Thank slash you. Google slash Oxford Languages Dictionary. Perfect. So there it is. Yep. So in case any of those people came looking for potential witches, he didn't want his sisters being prosecuted as being a witch. That was nice of him. Yeah. He's like, here, girls, you get your own little secret yeah. <laughs> escape route. <laughs> to get away. We don't want you Even to Even though be you're a witch. not witches, but you might be. Exactly. So here's your special area. Uh-huh. So the House of the Seven Gables is one of the oldest surviving and surviving timber-framed mansion house in the continental North America, with 17 rooms and over 8,000 square feet. Wow, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. So then there's John Turner III, who lost the family fortune, <gasps> and this was when the Ingersoll family bought the house and remodeled it. Gables were removed, porches replaced, and the 
Gregorian trim was added. Okay, in case anyone is wondering, I did Google what a gable was because it comes oh, up yeah. a lot. So a gable is like kind of the like meeting point of two like roof arches to form like that little like triangular roof shape uh-huh. over I think it's like over a specific doorway. So the gables are kind of like the the pointed po- <laughs> The points of, like, the roof where it, like, arches over a doorway. I think that's what I remember looking up that could be wrong. Um, So, friends, that's a gable. (laughs) Our attempt at explaining My attempt at explaining a gable. Only because it comes up a lot. And it's literally called the House of Seven Gables. So I thought, like, maybe I would. Seven Gables. Yes. So I was like, maybe I should just, like, double check that one. So I'm pretty sure that's what it is if I'm explaining correctly. Cool. It's altogether possible that it is not accurate whatsoever, but... <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. All right. So Ingersoll, unfortunately, died at sea because he was also a sea person. I don't oh. know if he was a captain or what specifically he was. Oh. But he died at sea, leaving the property to his daughter, Susanna, who was... Uh, she was a cousin of famed author Nathaniel Hawthorne, which inspired his book in 1851, The House of the Seven Gables. Which is so cool. This literal uh-huh. actual house inspired a very famous novel by a very famous author. Yeah. I love it so much. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. That's neat. So Nathaniel was told about the house's history and shown where the original gables were, and he was more inspired by the seven gables uh, or. He was more inspired by the way the seven gables sounded and was inspired to write his book from the gables. That's so cool. I don't know how gables inspired him to make a book. I mean, it is a really cool looking house. The shape of it is uh really interesting. It's this like really unique, really old looking like mansion thing. And just, I mean, as someone who doesn't obviously know anything about architecture, as we've just established, I do think it looks really cool. And I can Mm -hmm. see where the gables would be. And I actually don't know what kind of book that is. I don't know if it's a horror novel. I don't know if it's like a fantasy fiction. What I don't even know what kind of story it is, but I could totally see that house being the inspiration for... A work of fiction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Susanna eventually died and her son inherited the house, but he ran into financial trouble and had to sell in 1879. And um, at that time, it stood mostly vacant. 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 (laughs) Vacant. And it was in danger of being ripped down. But it was saved by Henry Upton, who stabilized it. Then there was a philanthropist uh, by the name of Caroline Emerton, who founded the present-day museum to assist immigrant families who were settling in Salem. She purchased the mansion in 1908 and worked to restore the building to its perceived appearance from the 1600s. She wanted to preserve the house for future generations to provide educational experiences to visitors. Over the years, they moved five significant... um, they moved five additional structures of historical significance, including the Retire Beckett House, the Hooper Hathaway House, Nathaniel Hawthorne's birthplace, the Fippin House. The Fippin? The Fippin, I think. Fippin House. <laughs> and the Counting House. Oh. I don't know what any of those houses are, nor did I do my research for Probably any of the houses. little, like... Like little structures within the broader like home, I would assume like yeah. little wings and hallways and rooms and stuff. Yeah. Um. And so the museum is. So in the museum, there are a lot of Nathaniel's work showcase where you can see more than two thousand artifacts and objects, more than forty framed works, five hundred photographs and negatives, and more than fifty volumes. In their rare book library. Ooh. So it is open. To the public for tours and they got the little museum there yeah and the house of seven <gasps> gables campus constitutes it? its own national district on the national <sighs> register of fucking historic places and it's all in caps again it sure is with about a million exclamation marks wait its own district yeah they were able to make it its own little district because of all the little houses and things so like it's its own it's little it's literally district. like its own small 
area. Yes. It's not just a place on the National no. Register of Historic Places. It's its own freaking yes. district. Yes. Like a little goddamn city. Mm-hmm. That's cute. Mm-hmm. I love it. So. You guys. Conspiracies. Connect the dots. Do it. I'm not going to do it for you. Do it yourself. You know what we're talking about. I feel like I need to put this on the conspiracy subreddit in Reddit. I to feel see if like. anybody else agrees with me. I feel like it needs to go there. And because we need there's to feed too many off connections. the internet. Yes. Yep. And then let you guys know what the reddit says yeah because they're just chock full of information and actually our craft cocktail cult is just a cover-up for us to actually infiltrate the ear holes of our listeners yes. with the national register of historic places cult yes which we are secretly a part of which i'm actually revealing to you now so yes. you guys here it is if you've been listening to this podcast i'm so sorry you've been brainwashed <laughs> i hate to tell we you have infiltrated your ear holes they've been penetrated hard so hard <laughs> I'm so and sorry, here. and here we are. So sorry, um, guys. Uh, so if if uh, you know if your house is on the National Register of Historic Places, welcome to the cult that you didn't know you were a part welcome. of. Welcome. Um, if you'd like to get your house on the National Register of Historic Places, you know, email some government people yeah. and join the cult of haunted places slash historic places slash you know where we have lots of alcoholic beverages as part of our craft cocktail cult. Uh-huh. It's all intertwined. It's a fun time. It is a good time. It's so good. You know what else is a good time? What is a good time? Lots of ghosts. Yeah, you tell me about these ghosts. I would love to... The goats? All the many goats <laughs> yes. that live at the House of the Seven goats. Gables? The seven goats? The seven goats. Of the House of Seven Gables? Yes. And they live in the gatehouse and of the goats? And there's seven ghosts. Yes. The go- the seven ghosts of the goats that live in the gatehouse <laughs> of the House of Seven Gables? <laughs> How did you know? That's what I was going to talk about. Can you make that the episode title? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That'll be a hundred years long. <sighs> oh, shit. All right. Tell so, me. Hauntings. Tell me. My sources were ghostcitytours.com, hauntedhouses.com, salemghost.com, hauntheads.wordpress.com. Haunt heads. Yep. Just heads that are like haunted? Like metal heads, mm. but haunt heads. They're like, those are like our people. Yes. Okay. The people who are obsessed okay. with haunt haunted heads. things. So does that mean we're haunt heads? Yes. Yes. All right. That's who we are. Glad to know that we have a name now. I'm glad I've established my identity with the world. <laughs> Here we are. We're Hauntheads. We're Hauntheads. So thank you, Hauntheads.wordpress.com. So for many years, there have been a number of spirits reported at the Turner Ingersoll slash House of Seven Gables mansion. So tour guides and employees actually tend to argue that the mansion is not haunted at all. And when asked if there are any spirits lurking around the house, they're usually quick to deny any paranormal Mm, activity. Means that it's haunted. Um, uh, I think that thou dost protest too much. Yep. Isn't that a famous quote from something? Sure. I You're denying you. the hauntings and it's it's a lie. It's a we, lie. We know, it. we know it. You're on the National Register of Historic Places. Yeah, places. don't even pretend. Come on. Come on. Get it together. Um, so yes, of course, local lore always has a different story, and many of the visitors and locals who visit the home, of course, say it's uh, you know, haunted. Yes. So, you know, the tour guides, they they think that generally they're saying that because they they the point of the mansion is not to be a haunted destination. They want to really encourage like the history history of the home oh, and sure. the connection to Nathaniel Hawthorne. So they're like, ah, oh, it's not haunted, but they're probably saying that more so for publicity than anything, yeah. or I guess to avoid publicity of it being haunted. So a number of generic paranormal incidents have been reported at the mansion, such as water faucets and lights turning on and off by themselves all throughout Ooh. the house. People have also reported hearing disembodied screams as well as deep growling sounds. Oh, which I don't, I like, that. don't like. No. And being touched by unseen hands. Cool. My personal favorite. <laughs> the best. It's the best. Various shadowy figures have been spotted on multiple floors throughout the home, as well as reports of a strong, unknown, but benign presence that people can feel following them throughout the mansion when mm. they visit. No, thank so you. there's just this generally like positive non-evil presence that doesn't really mean anyone any harm but essentially just tags along with people just hangs it, out yeah and people can literally just feel it following them throughout the mansion while they're there probably just making sure they're having a good time yeah you know like let me take you on a tour of the house let me, let me show you where i where i've been yeah all that yeah. good stuff 
Uh, people have also reported seeing spirits and shadowy figures near the famed gables of the mansion. Mm-hmm. And some have even heard someone tapping on the windows as though someone were trying to get their attention. But, of course, when people turn oh. around to look at the source of the tapping sound, there's no one there. Of course not. Of course not. Gosh. That's so creepy. In the famous secret staircase, which you mentioned earlier, visitors have witnessed the spirit of a man clamoring up and down the stairs. So some people say it's like specifically a black man. Others just say it's just the spirit of a man. And people who have seen him are usually like they try to say that his existence in the mansion is due to him being part of the Underground Railroad. So like as an escaped slave who was like trying to like make his way up to the north, he like would have stopped through the mansion and gone through the secret staircase. But the actual Turner house, even during the 18th and 19th centuries was never, um, according to historical records was never actually a stop on the underground railroad. And the secret huh. steps were not even built until nearly 50 years after the closing of the civil war. So that, oh. that theory has been sort of like discredited. Mm-hmm. However, some people have also reported feeling unnaturally dizzy or lightheaded while climbing the stairs, while some others sometimes report feeling an oppressive force pushing down on them. Some have even reported a sensation of being pushed backwards down the stairs as they're trying to climb them up, as though someone were trying to force them out of the attic. Oh, shit. That'd be scary. back down the stairs. Fuck that. Like, get out of my attic, bitches. No, thank you. That's so scary. Uh Uh-huh. Another famous ghost in the property is uh, the reports of a phantom boy who enjoys playing in the attic. Throughout the day, his little footsteps can be heard pouncing around upstairs as he giggles. Pouncing around. Pouncing. I love that so much. Pouncing and prancing and dancing and (laughs) laughing like a little merry boy he is. So he's Aww. pouncing around like a goddamn cat, and Perfect. people hear him giggling and laughing, but no one is certain exactly who he is. So according to one historian, the attic space once functioned as the servants' quarters for the property, so people think it's possible then that the ghostly boy is one of the servants who once lived there. For others, they adamantly believe that the little boy is Julian, the son of Nathaniel Hawthorne, Aww. who of course That's was cute. inspired by the home to write his book. So... I think there's an argument against that, though, that, like, basically his son was born so much later in his life. Like, apparently Nathaniel Hawthorne used to visit the property earlier in his childhood, Mm -hmm. and then he didn't go back as much as an adult. So people are like, why would his kid be, Be like, attached to the place when he wouldn't have been going there as an adult? But I have no idea whether or not he actually came back with his child or not, or whether Mm -hmm. or not it's just the ghost of a servant boy or his son. I do not know. I don't know. Okay, so then during one visit, a psychic by the name of Lisa was taking a tour of the house, and she made contact with a presence and took a picture on the back porch of the little boy that people often report seeing. She was actually able to capture... Oh, my God. She was actually able to capture photographic evidence. um, That's cool. Yeah, so she saw him playing up by the gables. Uh, Which was super cool because it kind of verifies the stories that a lot of other people had told. Mm -hmm. And then the last frequently seen specter at the House of Seven Gables is none other than Susanna Ingersoll, the cousin, like you said, who bought the home. So she has been spotted walking through the halls of her former home and even peeking out of the windows to those who enter the estate through the garden below before suddenly vanishing. Oh, she just disappears. She just poofs out of thin air. Yep. Huh. Yep. So there's not a ton of other evidence beyond this because actually f- very few paranormal groups are allowed in to investigate or publish their findings. Again, like I said, because the Makes people sense. who own the mansion don't want it to be associated as like a paranormal place. They just want it to be known for the history and they don't want people to lose focus on their mission statement, which is to be a source of education, preservation, and community philanthropy. Aww. So they don't want to... That they, makes sense. I'm sure like they're, they probably probably admit you know deep down in their heart of hearts that there's probably things that they've seen but they don't want that to be the focus so they try to focus on really what they're trying to do for the community which Mm -hmm. i think is cool and cute and sweet yeah and so sorry for spreading the word about it being haunted sorry you guys our podcast (laughs) but it's haunted it's haunted haunted as shit heck yeah so that's the house of seven gables slash seven gables turner ingersoll mansion Woo! there it is there she is can we, for, like, our 30th birthday, can we go to Salem yeah. and just, like, spend a full, like, five-day, like, long weekend yes. trip there and go, go to go all the haunted places? October, yes! Halloween, for Halloween? Yes. Yes, yes, Perfect. yes. Perfect. I yes. love it. All right, so your favorite time. 
Lovecraft cocktail cult. The best time. The one the and only time. Love cocktail cult. Bow, bow, bow. Tonight. Did you, did you make this, by the way? No, I haven't yet. Okay. I will. I was going to say, did it taste it. good? I, I think I've made this before because okay. I saw the recipe. I was like, this looks really familiar. So as a quick preface, guys, like the recipe we're doing is a Mai Tai and I have a recipe book that I got as part of like a craft you know, cocktail making kit thing. That and recipe you know book is so, really hit or miss because we had our blue, blue, blue and was that gonna thing say, was just fucking shit. Some of them are awesome and some God. of them have been so fucking god awful. It like not only gets you absolutely wasted but it makes you want to barf because it tastes yeah. so bad. So the blue, blue, blue came from that book but also some really great recipes have come from yeah. that book and unfortunately... We tried to make a Mai Tai, so that's what we're making tonight, or that's what Anna's recipe that she's going to share is for tonight, is a Mai Tai. And the one I tried from this book was so horrible, and Anna's like, we're going to do a Mai Tai for next week. And I'm like, I hope yours turns out fucking better than mine did, because it tasted like shit. What did yours have in it? Everything. Like, 17 different kinds of alcohol. Oh, yeah, no. It had rum, and it had amaretto, and it had triple sec, and it had um above maybe vodka. And I don't know. It had like well, it literally three of those alcohols. I don't remember. It literally had everything. Mm. And it was gross. And well, I haven't made it. So hopefully this. this one's not gross. <laughs> I think I made it, but I don't remember because I saw the recipe. I was like, this looks really familiar, but I don't fully remember. So if it's terrible, I'm so sorry. If it's good, <laughs> you're welcome. Even if it's not good, you'll get wasted. So exactly. you're welcome for a I nice mean, buzz. We gave you blue, 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 and that's not very good. No. So, but it was effective. Exactly. Okay. okay. So my tie. In your shaker glass, you are going to put two ounces of light rum, three quarters of an ounce of triple sec, uh, a half ounce of lemon juice, one and a half teaspoons of lime juice, and one and a half teaspoons of amaretto into your shaker. You're going to top it with ice and you're going to shake for 15 seconds. You are then going to take either a low ball glass, you could do a martini glass, you could do a coupe glass. And then you are going to strain it into said glass. You can garnish with a lime wedge, a lemon wedge, a cherry, a whatever. Peach wedge, a peach strawberry wedge, wedge. You know, whatever your heart desires. A broccoli wedge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any kind Anything of wedge you want. Your heart desires. The best wedge. And then you drink it. And then it's delicious. And hopefully. It's hopefully delicious. You guys, I'm so sorry if it's not. So sorry. That recipe sounds suspiciously similar to the one I've made, and I'm oh. a little bit nervous for everyone <laughs> that it's going to be gross, but... I'm pretty sure I made it before, and it was pretty good. It's possible that also we were using, like, shitty ingredients. Yeah, you know? it could be. The quality of the ingredients does make a difference, so... uh, Yes, it does. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Um, yep. so friends, if you try so, this recipe, let us know. We want to hear yeah. what you think. Let us know if it's disgusting. I'm so sorry if it so is. So sorry. <laughs> um, but even if it isn't disgusting, we want to hear from you and we definitely want to hear from you if you've experienced anything paranormal or hard to explain or scary or creepy. If you know someone that's been in a cult or your best friend was related to a serial killer, or maybe you just experienced some interesting bumps in the night that you can't quite explain. Mm -hmm. We want to hear about it. Hell yeah. Send in an email to nightmarenation19 at gmail.com, please. Or you can check us out, interact with us on the social media. That's where we post all of our beautiful beverages. You see our beautiful, bright and shining faces. Yeah. Uh, check us out on the Insta at nightmare.nation19 or the Facebook nightmare underscore nation19 and interact and just say hey and we love hearing from you. We can't wait. Yeah. It's going to be a blast. It's a fun time. You know what's not time. a fun time though? What? Is using a Ouija board. Don't fucking use a Ouija board. Um, it's dipshits. not fun. It's the opposite of fun in fact. It it's is. It's like quite literally the least fun thing you could ever do because it's you're going to summon a fucking demon. Uh, you're just a letting death into your life in fact we just rewatched. don't want that yeah we just so. watched um the conjuring 2 which of course we covered i think it was like episode 17 of this podcast where we talked about the enfield haunting i think yeah. it was episode 17 fruity garbage i want to say yeah i think so uh great episode prime prime uh so good. listening no that was that was haunting in connecticut was it what it was like either 17 or 18 for sure yeah was it was enfield it was haunting. earlier yes yep. so we talked about it for sure but i rewatched the movie of course of which that is based and it, like, started with a little girl, of course, using a freaking homemade, like, DIY Ouija board. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you stupid child, why would you do that? Don't do you it. dumbass. Stupid kids. Don't do it. Don't let your kids use Ouija boards either. 
Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. Don't have one in your house. Don't keep one in your car. Don't even think about buying one from no. Barnes & Noble, which Anders has done to me multiple times. Nope. He's like, I saw a Ouija board on sale at Barnes & Noble. And I'm like, don't you fucking Bitch, dare. Bitch, you'd be kicked out of this house so goddamn fast. We'd be uh, having some divorce conversations <laughs> if you even think about <laughs> that bringing that home. That shit ain't coming anywhere near this house. Not funny. Nor in your car, nor in my car. Thank you. <sighs> so. So that was a long-winded uh, way of us saying, please don't have a seance and don't use a Ouija board. Just don't do it. Um, and please be safe. Be safe. Have a good time. Have Love fun. each other. Be safe. Be kind. And uh, we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye.